This is Twit. So there's some welcome news yes. in the world of open versus closed encryption standards. Last summer, we covered the story of serious flaws being found in yet another closed and proprietary radio encryption system. The fastest way to bring everyone back up to speed is for me to share just the the beginning of a some coverage in Wired uh, uh, about this discovery at the time. They said, for more than 25 years, a technology used for critical data and voice radio communications around the world has been shrouded in secrecy to prevent anyone from closely scrutinizing its security properties for vulnerabilities. But now it's finally getting a public airing, thanks to a small group of researchers in the Netherlands who got their hands on its <laughs> viscera and found serious flaws, including a deliberate backdoor. The backdoor, known for years by vendors that sold the technology but not necessarily by customers, exists in an encryption algorithm baked into radios sold for commercial use in critical infrastructure. It's used to transmit encrypted data and commands in pipelines, railways, the electric grid, mass transit, and freight trains. It would allow someone to snoop on communications to learn how a system works, then potentially send commands to the radios that could trigger blackouts, halt gas pipeline flows, or reroute trains. Researchers found a second vulnerability in a different part of the same radio technology that is used in more specialized systems sold exclusively to police forces, prison personnel, military, intelligence agencies, and emergency services, such as the C-2000 communication system used by Dutch police, fire brigades, ambulance services, and Ministry of Defense for mission-critical voice and data communications. The flaw would let someone decrypt encrypted voice and data communications and send fraudulent messages to spread misinformation or redirect personnel and forces during critical times. Three Dutch security analysts discovered the vulnerabilities, five in total, in a European radio standard called TETRA, short for Terrestrial Trunked Radio, which is used in radios made by Motorola, DAM, spelled D-A-M-M, Hytera, and others. The standard has been used in radio since the 90s, but the flaws remained unknown because encryption algorithms used in Tetra were kept secret until now. The technology is not widely used in the U.S., where other radio standards are more commonly deployed, but uh, Caleb Mathis, a consultant with Ampere Industrial Security, conducted open-source research for Wired and uncovered contracts, press releases, and other documentation showing Tetra-based radios are used in at least two dozen critical infrastructures in the U.S. Because Tetra is embedded in radios supplied through resellers and system integrators like Powertrunk, it's difficult to identify who exactly might be using them and for what. But Mathis helped Wired identify several electric utilities, a state border patrol agency, an oil refinery, chemical plants, a major mass transit system on the East Coast, three international airports that use them for communications among security and ground crew personnel, and a U.S. Army training base. Okay, so back when this all broke, we dug into this more deeply. But that explains the breadth and importance of this system. It's far more widely used throughout Europe than in the U.S., but that doesn't make it, you know, it make its security any less important. The fact that the system is so old and that it's been in place since the 1990s likely explains part of the problem. Once again, we have inertia. We think it's encrypted. The colorful glossy brochure says it uses super fancy air interface encryption, whatever that is. And we already have a huge investment in these radios in the field. So we really don't want to be told that it's all crap. Thank you very much. So here's the good news. Although the gears are turning as slowly as ever, after being bombarded with well-deserved criticism for keeping its crappy encryption algorithm secret for the past 25 years, after they were exposed as such, and not until, the European Standards Body, ETSI, Etsy, behind the Tetra algorithms, has finally decided to open them to the public for scrutiny. Although one could argue that those three Dutch security analysts have already done that. 
At the time, Matthew Green, the Johns Hopkins University cryptographer and professor whom we often quote calling the technology, he, he called the technology in use old-fashioned and behind the times for continuing a practice of secrecy that had long been abandoned by the security world. When asked about the recent decision to open the encryption now to the world, he said, quote, this whole idea of secret encryption algorithms is very 1960s and 1970s and quaint. It's nice to see them joining us here in the 21st century, unquote. And now having made the decision to go public, they are owning it. Etsy's statement said, quote, Keeping cryptographic algorithms secret was common practice in the early 1990s when the original Tetra algorithms were designed. Public domain algorithms are now widely used to protect government and critical infrastructure networks. For example, AES, the Advanced Encryption Standard standardized by the U.S. government. Effective scrutiny of public domain algorithms allows for any flaws to be uncovered and mitigated before widespread deployment occurs. So, yeah, right. As Matthew said, welcome to the 21st century, but better late than never. And what will be interesting is to see whether they did better. There was, the, 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 remember we talked about it, there was like the, the T, they call it TEA, T1, T2, T3, T4, some of them were deliberately crippled, and those were like the ones they sold to governments that they trusted less and presumably didn't want them to have strong encryption and maybe be able to break it, break into it if they needed to. And then now they've kept going to 6, 7, and 8. So we're going to be able to see, you know, if the new stuff is, is any good. So we don't know. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, Editor-in-Chief of Ad Aster Magazine, and each week I join with my co-host to bring you This Week in Space, the latest and greatest news from the final frontier. We talk to NASA chiefs, space scientists, engineers, educators, and artists, and sometimes we just shoot the breeze over what's hot and what's not in space, books, and TV. And we do it all for you, our fellow true believers. So whether you're an armchair adventurer or waiting for your turn to grab a slot in Elon's Mars rocket, join us on This Week in Space and be part of the greatest adventure of all time.